we've got um, Edgar Jembere, who will now um, do a presentation on artificial intelligence uses, benefits and challenges, a study in the Western Cape of South Africa financial services industry. Am I? No, sorry, guys. I am repeating. Um, I'm at uh, Hakuna's presentation. Sorry about that. It is analyzing coronavirus trends in South Africa and countries with a similar coronavirus profile. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much for, for the introduction. Uh, my name is um, Edward Jimberi. I'm going to present uh, the findings from our paper, which I was with uh, the co-authors this week um, over there. The title of this paper is Analyzing Coronavirus Trends in South Africa and Countries with Similar Coronavirus Profiles in South Africa. Um, as we can see from um, um, the chart that I do have here, the graph that I do have here, South Africa is one of the countries that was hard hit by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, even though it is one of the uh, countries that um, adopted um, a use of non-pharmaceutical interventions to stop the spread of the virus. Um, while the interventions seemed to have delayed um, the spread of the virus, um, the number of cases and the fatalities from the virus still rose um, to levels which are even much higher than some other countries that um, did not uh, uh, employ um, interventions of similar uh, severity. Uh, this raises some questions on why this is the case. And therefore, this study is going to investigate um, and try to find some reasons why South Africa and other countries that have a similar coronavirus to South Africa had such a trajectory um, uh, on the uh, coronavirus uh, cases and fatalities. Um, so to address this um, um, uh, problem, uh, we came up with some research methodology, uh, which has three phases. Uh, the first phase involved uh, profiling uh, the, the countries uh, and find countries that are similar to South Africa. Uh, so we came up with a simple approach for doing so, which we named the Alpha Sigma nearest neighborhood approach for, for profiling countries. Um, Edgar? Yes. Sorry, Edgar, I'm sorry for interrupting you. The, the sound is coming and going. Could you possibly um, sit closer to, I assume you're using a microphone in your laptop? Um, um, can you maybe uh, let me let me maybe stop stop using the headphones and use the mic on the laptop? Um, hello, Rene. Can you hear me? Yes, that sounds that sounds sounds much better. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well. Yes, perfectly. Hello, Rene. Yes, I can hear you, Edgar. We can all hear you. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you sound a bit far away. Um, it, you, your um, sound was actually better just now. Um, okay, maybe I can project my voice a little bit higher. Is it, is it working? Okay. Okay. Uh, so our methodology had uh, three phases. The first phase involved uh, profiling um, um, the countries based on their um, coronavirus uh, statistics. Uh, and then the second phase involved um, cross-sectional uh, correlational analysis of the socioeconomic variables um, uh, and uh, the number of new cases and fatalities of uh, the coronavirus. And the last phase was the qualitative analysis of the association of um, non-pharmaceutical interventions with and the spread of the virus. So what we did is we used the profiling uh, to get countries with similar coronavirus uh, profiles of Africa. 
and we did cross-sectional correlation analysis within um, that group of countries and do the analysis of association with the industry and um, again within that group of um, countries. Um, Rene, can you just give me a feedback? Are people hearing me now, now much better now? It's, it's still a little bit faint. Maybe you could just sit slightly closer to your microphone. Um, okay. Um, well, on the first phase, uh, we were um, profiling uh, the different the different countries. Uh, so in our study, what we did is we used the number of um, cases and the fatalities from coronavirus to profile the countries. Um, the data that we use for profiling, we got it from our origin data. Um, so what we did is we first created a feature a feature space, um, which is um, um, we, which where we use the number of cases and the number of fatalities in that in that space by a 15 day interval. Uh, so what we did is we get um, the number of new cases in the first 15 days from the first day the case was observed, and then we also get the number of cases on the next 15 days, that is from day 16 up to day 30, uh, and we did so up until we get to day um, day one 150. So that created the feature space. Uh, for profiling um, the countries. Uh, after we have done so, we then um, do a ZEPCO normalization of our, um, our, our features. Uh, this was important because the number of cases um, was much larger than the number of uh, fatalities, uh, and therefore we didn't want it to dominate the data, so we had to uh, normalize it. Um, uh, so after we've done the normalization, we then uh, computed the Euclid and distance uh, of um, the countries that we're having in our data uh, from South Africa. And we took the countries which were in uh, two sigma a distance away from South Africa as the countries that have got a similar coronavirus uh, profile to South Africa. And sigma here is just the standard deviation of the distance from South Africa. And our alpha in this case was uh, equal to two. Um, then our findings from phase one, uh, we can see uh, nine countries were found to be in the two sigma um, uh, neighborhood of South Africa. Um, and uh, when we plot the trajectories of uh, the number of cases and the number of deaths, we, we saw that the, the trajectory um, relatively uh, similar. And we can see for all the cases, um, the peak in terms of the number of cases occurred well after 100 days, and the peak in terms of number of fatalities also occurred well after um, 100 days. Uh, on the second phase, uh, we did uh, Bayesian um, cross section of Bayesian correlation analysis. Uh, so what we did is we took some countries that are in the 2.5 sigma neighborhood of South Africa. Uh, we could not use two here because um, uh, two sigma because they, they were going to have very few countries uh, that we, we then have to use for correlation analysis. So to make sure that we have got a sizable um, amount of data we then use the 2.5 uh, sigma neighborhood. Um, and the data that we used uh, was collected uh, from UN and World Bank database and it was collected as of uh, 20, 2018. We couldn't get the latest socioeconomic um, um, data about the countries. Uh, um, so we ended up using the 2018 data. Uh, for our cross-sectional correlation analysis, we did it at um, an early point and at a late point. Um, and at the early point for number of cases, we used 10 days after the first case was observed. And the late point, we used 150 days after the first case was observed. For number four, number of deaths, we did 45 for the early date, uh, 45 days after the first um, death, and 150 days after uh, the first death for the late death. Um, because um, uh, correlation analysis, there are some assumptions that need to be made first, and there are four assumptions which are listed here. And our data violated um, two of the assumptions, that assumption three and assumption four. Um, our data on socioeconomic variables was not um, um, approximately normally distributed. Uh, and hence, we had to use, instead of using the PSN correlation, we had to use a kind of LB correlation coefficient. Um, and also there were some outliers. So we needed to remove the outliers from the data and we 
only removed extreme outliers using um, um, the stream applied by the interquartile range of the data for every socioeconomic variable. Uh, our results for cross-sectional correlation analysis are as, uh, as follows. Um, we did Bayesian um, um, correlation analysis. And here, when you're using Bayesian correlation analysis, we say um, the correlation is significant if you have got um, a high BF factor. Uh, and usually a BF factor above 10 um, um, suggests that we have a strong evidence for the, for the correlation. Um, so we didn't observe any strong correlations between our socioeconomic variables and um, uh, the number of cases, um, but we observed moderate correlations, uh, which were between uh, three going close to 0 0.3 going close to um, 0 0.5. Um, so significant moderate um, uh, correlations were found um, with uh, population age 60 plus, life expectancy, government health expenditure. And these variables seem to be related to aging population. So from our correlation analysis, it seems to suggest that in the first 30 days uh, of uh, the virus, um, it, it, it tends to be more correlated with uh, 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 populations that have uh, um, aged um, that is uh, countries that have got aged population. When you look at the correlation in 150 days after the, the first case, significant correlations were found with life expectancy and GDP per, per capita. Uh, and this one, GDP per capita, was a bit more surprising for us uh, because we would have um, expected maybe a negative correlation rather than a positive one. Uh, but this, this finding is also similar to findings from other, uh, from other studies. And from um, our analysis, um, the correlations that we, uh, we observed here, they were all strongly supported by, by data with very high, um, with very high um, uh, base factors. You can see here 387.0, uh, 386.77, 98.0, 27.11.32 as it, as it goes. Uh, when we went to look, uh, to look at the number, correlation with number of fatalities, um, the only significant correlation that we found was with life expectancy within the first 45 days since the first death was observed. That's the, that was the only significant one. Uh, it wasn't a strong correlation. Um, it, was, um, it was moderate, but it was significantly supported by the data uh, because it had a base factor of 14.7. Uh, After 150 days, uh, we had moderate correlation with uh, government health expenditure, but it was not strongly supported by the evidence uh, with the BS sector, which is less than 10 over there. Uh, but all in all, our findings on correlation analysis, they seem to be um, um, a, a, a strong, a, a moderate correlation between uh, uh, countries with aging population and the number of cases and uh, fatalities of uh, coronavirus. Uh, in phase three, we, uh, we did some um, qualitative analysis for association between um, the non-pharmaceutical interventions and um, the spread of the virus. Um, and here, uh, because of the varying nature of the different interventions that the countries employed, uh, we ended up only looking at uh, full lockdown. Um, so that's what we looked at. So we then used our methodology of getting uh, of profiling the countries and get those countries which, um, um, which can be grouped together with South Africa. Uh, and then we uh, then did an, a qualitative analysis of um, the interventions that were employed in terms of uh, the lockdown. Um, so our results show that the countries that um, employed preemptive lockdowns, uh, they managed to flatten the curve uh, and delay the peak of, um, of the virus. So, uh, here we just showed a few countries, just to avoid um, a clutter um, uh, on, the, on the figures. Uh, you can see uh, countries, South Africa, Colombia, Kazakhstan, and Bolivia. Um, you can see here the peaks occurred well after 100 days. Um, then countries that took a more reactive approach uh, to lockdowns, they experienced an early peak. As you can see here with uh, Italy, that we gave as, a, as an example here. Uh, another finding we also found from, from um, this analysis is the fact that um, there seemed to be an association between 
um, the number of cases and the, uh, the number of cases and the length of um, and the length of um, of the lockdown. If you look here, comparison of South Africa and, and Colombia, uh, you look at the data at Colombia and the, the data with uh, with Argentina. Argentina had a longer lockdown, and the the number of cases did not astronomically rise compared to the way it uh, it goes for uh, for South Africa and uh, uh, and Colombia. Um, so in conclusion, um, uh, our um, uh, our study highlighted the effectiveness of uh, our methodology for finding countries with a similar uh, COVID-19 profile. That is the Alpha Sigma neighborhood approach that we uh, that we use. Um, when we did the Bayesian um, correlational analysis of the socioeconomic variables and um, the number of cases and uh, fatalities of the virus, uh, we didn't find any strong uh, correlation um, between socioeconomic variables and um, the number of cases and fatalities of the virus. Uh, we only observed um, some moderate correlations and um, um, significant moderate co uh, correlations were observed um, for variable socioeconomic variables that are related um, uh, to aging populations, that is populations age uh, 60 plus less expectancy at death and uh, government health expenditure. Um, when you did our qualitative analysis of association of lockdowns with the number of cases, um, our um, the data seems to suggest that um, uh, coronavirus trajectories are associated with uh, when the lockdown was um, employed. Was it uh, preemptive or was it reactive? Um, and um, and secondly, the duration of uh, the lockdown. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Edgar. We have about um, seven minutes.